hi, I want to give you an overview of what you might want to use SuzyQ for. So you've heard about SuzyQ and you come to the SuzyQ landing page and you look at all the neat things, it looks cool. Uh, so you want to try it out. So SuzyQ is for network observability. Its goal is to let you ask questions about your, your network that are hard for you to ask right now. Uh, I'm going to do a demo on Windows. Uh, I'm assuming you already have Docker set up. Um, that's the easiest way. So we go to the getting started. And you see that uh, to run this demo, all we have to do is run this command. You can see that I flipped over to my Windows terminal. And to get started, we're just going to run this command. Again, this is the SuzyQ demo container. This will be really quick for me since I've already downloaded it before. It'll take longer for you. Uh, and you, you see you're, you're dropped into a Linux shell prompt. From here, we can start the SuzyQ CLI, the REST server, or the GUI. We'll start with the CLI. This gives you a CLI. Uh, we're going to start with the question command to see what we can do. You can see this list of, this is the data that's available from SuzyQ for you to look at. Since we don't know what's in this data, we'll start looking at the devices. So we'll type device, and you can see that it device has four commands that you can run. We'll pick show, and we get a whole bunch of data. We get 68 lines of data. So let's scroll up to see the column headers. You can see namespace, host name, all these things. Um, the namespace is interesting. So for SuzyQ, it's just the grouping of devices. It's the grouping of data. Um, you can see that uh, these different uh, namespaces have different sets of uh, vendors, router vendors in them. Uh, and let's get a let's get a handle on that. So SuzyQ has a command called unique, and unique gives you the list of unique things for a column. So we'll have to give it a column name, and the column will be namespace. So we can see the the different namespaces that we have. So we see the namespaces. Well, what else can we find out? Well, I'd also like to know about the uh, the number of vendors we have. So we can see choose vendor. And you can see that these are all the different vendors. But I actually want to see how many devices are, uh, are for each vendor. So I can add the count filter. And we can see that there are eight Aristas, eight Cisco's, et cetera. This just gives you a really quick way of like, of kind of looking into the data to see what we've got. The next command we want to try out is summary, summarize to get a summary of the data. Um, this gives the data. This gives a summary by the namespace. So, we as we saw before, we have five namespaces. Uh, so you can see the number of devices for for these namespaces, um, number of vendors, etc. Okay, let's look at routing protocol. So we'll start with BGP, and we'll do a BGP show, and that's 289 rows of data. So that's kind of a lot of data. Um, let's just pick one namespace. We'll pick the OSPFI BGP namespace, and we'll try su a summary for that. So BGP summarize namespace equals OSPFI BGP. And this gives us a, a really nice little summary. So the number of devices we have data from, you can see the number of connections that there are, uh, the number of VRFs, things that are failed, um, update RxTx data. Um, you also can see things like the number of, that there are three AFI SAFIs. Um, so that's interesting. So let's investigate and figure out what those are. We look at that using the unique command. So unique columns equals affi safi, and we still want that same namespace. And we can see that we have IPv4, unicast, and EVP. The next thing we'll look at is to see if any of the BGP sessions are down. So we'll do BGP show state equals not established. And we'll see that there's one session that's been configured, but is actually down. Now let's look at OSPF. We'll do the same thing. We'll see that there's all kinds of OSPF. Um, we'll again look at just the um, 
the IBGP, the OSPF IBGP namespace. Uh, and we can see uh, what's going on there. We can see that there it's all area zero. We can see that there's just one VRF, uh, et cetera. A quick look at the routing table I, again. Well, first, let's look at back at all the different data we can add. We're gonna we've looked at device and we've looked at BGP and OSPF, and now we're gonna try the routing table. So, uh, we're gonna look, we're actually gonna do a LPM, uh, and the address that we want is a one specific address for this, it doesn't matter, but you can see that I don't know how to type. Um, you can see that it gives you, and we wanted to pick the namespace, sorry about that. It gives you uh, what the LPM would be for each VRF for each device, which can be super handy. There's, of course, uh, lots more of you can do with any of these tables. Um, uh, you know, routing, BGP, OSPF, they have a lot of data. They actually have even more data than we show by default. There's a lot of data to, to look in and investigate. Let's exit out of the CLI and let's try out the GUI. I remember how to get the GUI started. So we started up the GUI and then I will have to split screens. You see, I flipped over to a web browser screen and SUSE Q runs on localhost and port 8501 by default. Uh, the opening page is the stat, what we now call the status page, and you can see for each namespace, it can give you the list of devices and how many are up and their states, interfaces, and routing protocols. So with a quick glance, you can kind of get an overview of your network. Let's look at the uh, Explore page, which is uh, very much like what you, we were doing in the CLI. So uh, it, the Explore page by default looks at the device table, and you can see the same data that we, we were looking at before down here. You can see the uh, summer, the summaries that we had looked at before. And this distribution count is the same thing as unique plus count. Um, so we could look at vendor information just like we were looking before. And you can see the count. Let's take a quick look at uh, BGP, uh, the data we were just looking at. And you can see the same, This it has the same data before. We can. Filter by namespace, we'll go to the OSPFI BGP namespace. And if we scroll down, we can see the same, this is the uh, connection that was not established that we had found before. Um, there's lots more to do. Uh, sorry, there's lots more to see and explore with SUSEQ. Uh, there's also the path command, I guess we should try out. So the path command requires you to put in a namespace and it does a, a layer three, uh, sorry, a multi-layer effectively just like a trace route. We have a video on, path, we have multiple videos on path commands that you should look at. Let me enter the IP addresses of two of the servers if I can remember them. Trace. And you see that it builds this multi-layer uh, trace route effectively of talking from server 101 to server two. Uh, so that is a very brief whirlwind tour of some of the things you can do with SUSEQ. There's a lot of data and a lot of ways to look at it. I think there's a lot of applications for it. Uh, I hope you find this interesting enough to try for yourself. You can download the demo container like I had, which comes with data. You can uh, start looking at your own, own data. Uh, try out SUSEQ. Uh, join the Slack channel uh, and help us build a really great product for Netflix.